Hello folks, it's Andy here from Ross and the Woodsman and welcome to my kitchen. Uh, the wife's car is in for a service today so she's using my car for work. But today's video is going to be about using the Nesmic knife to turn this into this. So yeah, this is a, a piece of willow that I'm working with and as you can see at the top here there's a pretty substantial knot there that the knife had to go through initially to start the battening process and yeah, the edge has held up well to that I can't see any you know, flat spots or any, any rolls or anything like that So yeah, so far so good Right folks, so that's uh, the piece of wood battened down into a sort of panel I'm just going to uh, tidy it up a bit so it's more of a flatter board to work with. Right folks, so that's the, the board flattened now, as, well, as much as I'm going to flatten it and what I'm going to do now is just use my stencil to draw the spoon shape onto the piece of wood and then start carving it out. So this is my stencil and it's, it's just a piece of card from my cereal box where I've drawn around one of my spoons at home and then cut it out and then glued it onto another piece of card from the cereal box and then cut it out and then glued it onto another piece of the cereal box and then cut it out and that way it gives me a stencil that's about probably two and a half mil thick and it just makes it a bit more durable than using a, a piece of paper So yeah, I'm just using the black sharpie marker here to go over the pencil because like I said, uh, I find the pencil starts to wear off as you move the piece around in your hand whereas the sharpie doesn't and as you can see there, it's just a, a basic shape of a spoon it's, you know, there's nothing too fancy in it um, I do enjoy spoon carving but I've never really gotten into it to the point that I do really artsy stuff with it it's just more to make a practical item that I can use um, at the minute, it's really spoon carving. I've bought a tool from a company called Beavercraft. It's one of those um, gouging chisels for helping to chisel out sort of bigger bowl shapes from woods like a cook's up or a, or a bowl. Um, yeah, so I ordered it from Beavercraft and they're based in Ukraine and it said it could take between, I think it was like the middle of July to sort of the 5th of um, August and by the end of the month we'll be living back up in Scotland. So I didn't want to get it delivered here in case it came sort of later, later on and then we wouldn't be here. So it's delivered to my parents' house up in Scotland and it's, it's, already got, it's actually already got there. That's the thing that's quite uh, frustrating because I could have, you know, carved, started trying to carve a bowl or a cook's an hour or something but I'll just have to wait a couple of weeks. But anyway, let's get on with the rest of the spoon carving. Hey bud. Hey bud. I was just taking that edge off there so it gives me a bit of a thinner board to hold on to 
what I'm going to start off with is hollowing out the, the bowl to the spoon before I start carving the rest up. So yeah, the bowl of the spoon, to be honest, all the times I've carved a spoon, I've never ever used a knife to actually carve the bowl. I've, I've used my hook, my hook knife for doing it. Um, I am going to attempt it with the Nesmic, but depending on how difficult it becomes, I might end up turning to my hook knife, because that's what I would normally do anyway. But I just wanted to see how this would do. So, I've really got no idea the best sort of process for this. Um, so I'm just going to do that over, I think. Um, it's how I expected it. It's something using a knife to actually carve the bowl is probably something that I need to practice in its own right without trying to do it for the first time with a, a Nesbitt knife. So yeah, for the bowl I'm going to use my, my spoon knife for that. I've uh, got my, my Mora hook knife, just my little cotton sheath with a piece of jute twine tied around it. Um, oh, Rusty's he's kicking his bowl for me. Um, yeah, using the Nesbitt knife to carve the bowl, it's not really the Nesbitt knife's fault, I'm not going to hold that against it, that's more to do with I've never carved a bowl of a spoon before with a knife other than a hook knife, so it's, some, it's, it's something I would need to practice in its own right before I started, you know, testing other knives at it. Um, but I'm more comfortable using a hook knife, so that's what I'm going to do. So that's the bowl scooped out, as, as deep as I'd like to have it. Um, I, I don't like to have them too deep. The first, uh, <laughs> the first spoon I ever carved, I made the bowl too deep. And when I was eating with it, scooping the food into my mouth, I ended up burning the top of my lip. Uh, quite badly, to be honest. But, <laughs> um, but that was because the spoon was too deep. So I make my spoons quite shallow, just enough to scoop the food up and let it sit, sit there and not like pour over the edges. But not too deep that it burns my mouth when I eat from it. But now I'm going to get carving the meat of this wood away and actually get form in the spoon. So for that I'll head back to the Nesmic. So as you can see here, I'm just using the Nesmic knife to sort of beaver chew my way into the shoulder here to get that sort of shape and then I'll carry on removing the rest of that material there and I'll do the same on the other side. So I've got the, the shoulder carved out here and then the worst of the meat away from the rest of the handle and what I'm going to do now is work around the edge of the bowl here around to the tip to sort of the centre point there and I'll flip over and then start removing the, the majority of the material from the other side but it's coming along I would say it's taking longer because I'm, I'm using just a knife for this whereas normally like 
all this sort of material here, I would use an axe to hack that away and it would be done a lot quicker. But I mean, other than that, yeah, it's, it's doing really well. Um, I'm getting no hot spots in my hands, it's not hurting. I'd say maybe the only hot spot I'm getting is on my thumb when I'm using my thumb to sort of control the cut and push on the back of the blades. But you know, you get that with pretty much most knives anyway um, when you're using them for carving. But yeah, other than that, it's doing well and I'm happy enough. So I'm just starting to carve out the, the shoulder on this side of the spoon by beaver chewing each way. So that's the, the rough profile carved out now. But what I'm going to do is sort of thin off some of the meat from the back. It's quite thick at the minute, so obviously I don't need anywhere near as much material as it's there right now. So yeah, I'm going to carve that out. But first, have a sip of the brew. So I've, what I've been doing is sort of removing it at an angle like that and then at an angle like that and then sort of down at the front um, basically like the, is it the hull, the underneath of a boat um, just to get the sort of gen you know, general shape and then I'll, I'll round it off so it's more spoon like and then taking away some of the material of the handle at the back here but yeah, I mean I I'm not a spoon carver and this isn't a tutorial video so I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is the way to do it but it's just how I'm finding it the, the easiest way for me to be doing it especially with a, a Nesmic
Well folks, that's a finished spoon card with the Nesmic knife. Um, I'll probably sand it down, smooth off the rough edges and all that, and then I'll give it an oil as well. I should probably tidy up some of these wood chips as well, or the wife has my behind. So my little journeyman pouch. Got some of this abronet, and this was recommended to me by Craig from the Bushbooker Padawan. And uh, yeah, it's really good stuff. So, this is what I use for sanding woodwork, and also when I do get around to making ferro rods, I use it for that as well. And there's different grits from 80 up to 600. And then onto the 600 grit grit, even. the final grit before I put a light oil on it. Right folks, so I'm just going to apply a coat of olive oil onto this spoon. So yeah folks, that's a spoon carved, it's just set off to the side there, soaking in the oil. Uh, I'll give it a couple of coats, and uh, I'm sure you'll see it come up on Instagram at some point over the next day or so. But um, yeah, another, another success for the, the Nesmic knife. Again, yeah, real, no real issues using that for carving the spoon, and um, actually holding that in the handle, never felt any hot spots in my hand doing the various uh, handle positions to carve it the way I wanted to carve it other than you know just the back of my thumb against the spine when you know doing push push cuts and that um, but like I said that's to be expected of any knife you use with a 90 degree spine for carving carving duties and that um, trying to use it to carve the bowl of the spoon out itself I'm, I'm not so much going to hold that against an Esmec. I mean, yeah, it's probably a bit more awkward due to the shape of the blade, but also it's, it's, it's a skill I haven't really practiced. I've never carved the bowl of a spoon before with a knife. I've always used a hook knife uh, all four times I've carved a spoon. Um, so, yeah, again, I'm not going to hold that against an Esmec. But in terms of, you know, battening through a piece of willow with a knot in that and then using it to carve, you know, all carve away all the material of that piece of board that I have. I came out with to make the spoon from, yeah, performed really well, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. And again, with the edge, still no issues with the edge, no rolling or anything like that. But yeah, like I said, another successful test. But I'm going to leave the videos there, folks. Uh, as always, thanks for you know taking the time today to watch, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.